So Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers seems to be a fan favorite and I guess I can see why. Newcomer, uh, new, uh, up and comer, Downer Harris plays Jimmy, uh, named after Jamie Lee Curtis. And you know, she plays, she's just a little girl, she's an actress who's little so whenever there's a kid actor in a movie, I don't like to harp on them too much because you know, they're just kids. But yeah, this movie came out 10 years later after the original in 1989. 10 years ago, Halloween, evil had a shape. Terror had a night. And now, he's back. Six bodies, Sherry, that's what I've seen. And I tell you, Michael Myers is here in this town. Halloween 4, the return of Michael Myers. I believe the marketing was like, he's back. And you know, that's how you get the return of Michael Myers. But yeah, do I like this movie? I, I like this movie. I think it's pretty good. Some people love it. Again, I don't think I love it, but I can see why. Let's get on with the facts. I should, man, when I edit this, maybe I should put like the, a fact thing or something. I don't know. So yeah, apparently they obviously brought back on. So after the failure, right? The bomb of Halloween 3, they brought back Deborah Hill and John Carpenter for, for uh, story ideas and whatnot. And apparently one of their, one of these ideas was to have the town of Hattonfield ban Halloween. So the, the idea was that the town, after all these terrible murders 10 years earlier, has been and Halloween. They, they don't recognize Halloween as a holiday. They don't allow Halloween masks, costumes, or Halloween candy. And apparently, Hunt, the deputy from the first two films, which I guess is the cop that Loomis was talking to heavily, would be a sheriff and would reprise, you know, his role 10 years later and, and suppress the stigma and claim that you know say the hints that he's back basically and this actually i like this a bit better honestly reading this and finding this out i liked it just a bit better than what we had in the film I'm not saying that the, the actual film that we got was bad but like them banning halloween as a holiday that is something interesting something good can they still do this yes but with the 2018 one being what it is i don't think they can and with halloween kills rumors this is just rumors i don't look up swear rumors but apparently but I for people apparently it's, it's violent more bloodier so i don't know but this honestly would have been way more interesting and like th this whole town being like super not closed minded but being consumed by fear because of michael myers and him coming back to Haddonfield to not only come back reprise it but do innate fear once again i think that would have been pretty cool actually but obviously it's not the film that we got and oh okay here we go it says apparently in the script michael was not supposed to be old flesh and blood instead he would be a ghostly apparition of him and somehow brought to life given the power by the town's repressed fear man this sounds interesting this sounds way more better oh man that sucks this actually sounds a bit more better on way more better in my opinion sounds like a jason like lives like friday 13 part 6 jason lives type situation i caught hated the idea the idea bringing back my as a ghost was not good enough for him ah oh, man you know what i don't even fine with that again it probably would have pissed off a lot of hardcore halloween fans but this sounds cool the town being repressed by fear and over consumed by fear and them like I guess bringing back my oh man you know what I would have liked that idea maybe it was just me so because they didn't come to to a creative control not creative control but creative agreement they sold the rights to Akkad so this is basically both Deborah Hill and Carpenter saying goodbye they're gonna do their own things and you guys deal with this basically again back then they, they were probably like in their 30s or something or something back then in like 82 or something in the 80s basically they just didn't know what you know what they had and you know, they wanted to do something different they wanted to challenge themselves they wanted to you know know do something different basically <laughs> i've seen that again and i can get that from a creative like perspective like the, obviously both of them are very creative person right they they want to create art you know that's what they love and so them doing a rinse and repeat of the same thing over and over again would have been gone against what they wanted to do so i get that i wouldn't say they dropped the ball because after this carpenter made wait did the thing come out this year i think that the same year that when did the thing come out it came out in the 80s i know whatever he made like the thing and everything he's made some really good movies so you know i guess them leaving was a good thing as well oh apparently Lindsay and tommy from the first one were almost protagonists i guess they would have been little kids right yeah they would have had the kids the lower babysits in the movie they're to be 10 years old living across from each other bonded by their experience and trips to child therapy but no longer committed thanks to Lindsay's overprotective mother they would each have to repress their own memories of the night that he came back home reading this i'm thinking 
myself this would have been way better again i'm not downplaying halloween the movie that we got it's pretty good as i stated but yeah that's cool both the the kids both tommy and what's the girl's name L Lindsay, being basically having post-traumatic disorder and them having to confront their trauma right being forced to confront the trauma of that night that he came back yeah that would have been way more interesting this is that they would go on the countryside away from hatfield and it was a tremendous bloody scene and they packed driving it at midnight i guess that opening by the way the opening is like opening is like the countryside i guess that they just kept that that the whole countryside thing the opening cool opening too very iconic opening of the whole countryside and pumpkins and whatnot and like they will both see the shape there and stalking them and killing people right and left and both the kids being getting away waking up on a farmhouse outside of a town in a country somewhere just having dreams oh god dreams and then next movie dreams anyways oh, here's the, the script was supposedly written in 11 days so in 1988 they had the writer strike uh, kind of like the strike that they had in 2008 which which made supernatural had like 16 episodes but apparently this strike went off for uh not 11 155 days beginning in march and ending in august which is apparently the longest strike in history this directly impacted countless films and t-shirts including nightmare and Street 4 which crapped out the first script in seven days and Halloween 4 which had at least 11 days to finish script that's interesting kind of hard to believe as well because this movie is like you know good but it doesn't feel messy you know it doesn't feel like there's things being like just be made up on the spot so that's good on them Granted, they probably had like, a good director or whatnot. Damn, 155 longer than the one in 2007 or 8. So there was originally going to be an opening scene explaining how Dr. Loomis survived the explosion. Bullshit. So, Alan McElroy, the writer, said that he wrote an opening, opening scene in Halloween. Oh, wait, never mind. I'm brother. Basically, the writer wrote an opening scene set in Halloween 2 hospital showing Lo Loomis being blown out of the room as a result of the impact of that film's expl explosive finale. However, it was never filmed. No. So basically, they were going to not only wreck on his death and michael's death but basically explain that he like was blown out of the hospital the window basically okay sure definitely would have died by that but you know halloween fans love him so you know bring him back which again I, as a someone who's not a fan you know donald pleasant is great to to watch so you know what Press didn't mind it oh god there's a one moment in the movie where there's a mask with like a pink hair god damn apparently the film's makeup department basically messed up so yeah one of the masks one of the producers brought on a mask it was pink with a white hair you know who Whoever said this quote, who, whoever quoted this said that the master wasn't quite right, but we'll work around it. So they got hired as Don Post Jr. when he redid this for us to use the Shatner mold because he only wanted the actual true face. Did get a chance to see those masks until we actually got to see on set. They were sick. They were all pink. Holy shit. Pink with white hair. <laughs> he said, uh, this is not right. It's supposed to be white with brown hair. And he told the producer this should be changed, which they did. However, the mask was just a bit tiny better with the white face and brown hair slicked all the way back. But it looks god awful i don't think is this the worst mask i think it is it's either this one or the uh, halloween 5 that have, have the worst masks and it's just so shocking that they can get the mask right for so long like jesus christ how hard is it like i think william the hold on the shatner mask the actor was like he said that if you use my mask that's my face you'll get fine for it basically like, okay this is making another mask and yeah they couldn't get it right for some reason don't know why and i don't know why it looked pink face with blonde hair that god hopefully i can find like a picture of it and put it on the video but that should look looks dumb i don't i don't know how long they like shot that for but apparently people and neighbors around the area where they shot at which was in utah salt lake city utah called the cops out for christopher daniel harris's well-being so yeah as i said before this is her i guess her first film right and so the residents weren't quite as used as the artificial of the film production and so years later daniel harris reveals in a 25 years of terror when a character runs through the town screaming for help legitimately someone called the cops she was banging on doors yelling for someone to help help me trick-or-treating or something so four o'clock in the morning and this person heard little scream like screaming up the streets and called the cops cops came story ended with the you know oh we're shooting something i was i was almost kidnapped off set just a good neighbor a good samaritan calling the cops on a little kid crying and screaming even though it was just a shoot on the set apparently much of the gore was added through reshoots so similar to halloween 2 return was originally made in the most 
mostly a bloodless spirit of the original. However, producers freaked out and demanded more gore. So then Michael needed to stick his thumb through someone's head, ripping her like his throat, and curve someone to death. And that was awesome. <laughs> when he sticks his thumb in someone's fucking, like, fucking forehead, just a big what the fuck moment there. And uh, Mustafa Akkad was very squeamish about the blood in real life. And I didn't really like that. Oh, hold on. He was on set for the reshoot shouting more blood. Oh, never mind. He wanted more blood, but he's very squeamish about it. So yeah, speaking of that, like, blood, uh, not bloody scene, but he sticks his thumb in it, like, his forehead. Like, kills both of those, like, doctors or whatever in the ambulance where he's getting carted out in the very beginning. Yeah, that shit was, like, a big what the fuck moment. It's more blood, which I'm fine with. I'm fine with. Took the goddamn with this, like, 50 minutes, like, fact BS scene. Michael is somehow alive. I ah, think I passed that. He's not even a supernatural being, but whatever. He has his bandages, by the way, around his, his whole face, which looks better than the actual mask of this fucking movie. They should have kept the band. The band I'm gonna look for that mask, by the way. Bandage, like, Myers? That should look cool. Oh, we found out Loomis is alive as well. But yeah, he finds out that he has another, like, sister. Or, like, sister-in-law or something. Or Lori Stroh had a kid, and she died for it. That's how they ride off. And apparently, Jimmy Lee Curtis either had a scheduling conflict or didn't want to come back. So they just kill their character off with a line. And now, Michael has a new target. This little girl named Jamie, played by Daniel Harris. He needs to go kill her. He's technically family with her. So yeah, he, like, pokes a guy's forehead out. He gets out. He goes to a diner. He gets his overall again. He meets Loomis. Who has a burnt face on his fucking face, which looks awful, awful makeup. That doesn't matter. Again, he survives, which should not be possible. They meet in the iconic like diner scene. He shoots him with a gun, blows up his car, he drives away. Loomis has a hitchhike. While that's happening, Jamie is having like hallucinations and dreams of Michael Myers. So there's like they do this like mind connect like I don't know, they have this kinetic connection or something. Where like she can see him, it has visions of him and has nightmares of him coming to kill him or kill her. I don't know, is that ever explained? It's the, the the only way it's explained rather because they're like bonded by blood or something which i guess should make sense but it's like so why is this little girl having these like why i don't think they ever explain it I, at least I, I just did not pay attention or not know weird but whatever i'll go with it she's having vision of him so you know she's going to school kids are bullying her because there's always gotta be that scene her foster sister name what's this girl name ellie oh god let me look at them oh, hmm. oh god oh no oh no what's this girl's name her foster sister rachel god damn took me for find out but rachel who's you know typical babysitter she so she's that sister that obviously likes to take care of jamie but also wants to do her own thing so she has a boyfriend that she finds out that boyfriend's cheating on her because he's an asshole so she's has this close bond with jamie and they both both the chemistry of daniel harris and ellie cornell are great they play great both of each other love both of them and rachel is just a, like a likable like final girl even if she's not the final girl of this movie it's daniel harris's character i like rachel as a final girl technically like second final girl as well she's very likable very charming at times and i, I like her quite a bit actually so no she's cool oh yeah but loomis is like crazy in this movie too he's got it like he's almost been like burnt to death even though he should have died and been telling people for years to kill this man and he's basically kind of crazy right he goes and investigates like the ambulance thing by himself he gets himself dirty like he's basically crazy in this movie he's gone not full mental yet and he's like limping around like, he's hurt and it's kind of ugh, man like you've seen this old guy trying to go pursue something that seems so difficult and impossible for, for him as a human being because michael myers doesn't seem like a human being he seems something beyond like just human and so it was definitely a different something different for dr loomis to, to do and slowly but surely myers gets to to jamie is there a scene I think there's a scene in, in like trees and trucks where she he's chasing her in these trees and tr not trucks in these trees right she's chasing them rachel helps her they're in the house he gets to them ugly ass a white mask god it's so ugly but anyways they go on a, on a rooftop this seems very notable because at one it's on a roof that's basically it honestly like you kind of have to run away turn around kick him one now but the scene's only notable because it's on a goddamn roof nothing amazing it's okay but it's just on a roof that's just cool i guess and then that's when they loomis gets the, the cops involved right again he keeps telling these people these cops think he's crazy but eventually when bodies start you know piling up guess what the cops finally like okay we need to go kill this guy and so they get their guns out they're on a road while well, that's happening myers is still chasing uh jamie and rachel he's in like the hood of a car behind them and then rachel decides to run over him so he's like pushed back into wherever he is and the cops finally get to both of them and shoots the shit out of them like
Jason goes to hell, right? They, they were, the cops just keep shooting him and shooting him and shooting him until he falls down to this well. And then just for, you know, double kill, double tap, right? A cop lights a dynamite, throws it in, and it explodes. And you're thinking to yourself, all right, we didn't see the body. He's probably not dead, but good job. They thought they killed him. Great job, right? And so, well, you know, I'm thinking that. We come back to home, and then, this is very cool, we cut to seeing a POV shot. of a mask all right well first it's not a mask yet and then this person this little person puts his mask on goes to this woman kills it and then you know everyone is screaming loomis goes up to the stairs turns out the final shot of this movie which is very cool is jamie with a clown mask on with a knife just like her brother did back in 1963 all those years ago 25 years ago to be exact and she's doing the same at the very end of this movie and loomis obviously screams had the has the iconic like no scream right he tries to shoot her and then a cop comes and grabs his gun looks up there's that shot again of jamie with the clown not, not a clown it just makes a mask with a knife and that was creepy and cool at the same time implying something great to be seen in the next you know movie which is sadly not the case but overall that was a very cool way to end like this movie where seemingly they killed myers but but it seems as if his the Indians implanted his self conscience went into Jamie's body and now she's doing the killing or the Indians implying the fact that it's implying that she has just gone through so much trauma that you know a trauma is causing her to be just like her brother something like that along those lines and yeah it's a cool look into the future of the movies and a cool way to end this you know, this movie so yeah overall Halloween 4 the return of Michael Myers still pretty good the future looked very bright for the series next will be Halloween 5 the revenge of Michael Michael Myers.